Hello everyone. Today we are going to study Standard 8's Chapter 4, Current Electricity and Magnetism. Constituents of an atom. An atom is the smallest unit of matter. It has nucleus in the center. Atom has same number of positively charged protons and negatively charged electrons. Therefore, we can say that plenty of electrical charge is filled in the objects around us. But because of same number of protons and electrons, an atom is electrically neutral. Protons are static or stationary charges means they do not move whereas electrons are moving charges where they move around a nucleus in a particular orbit. In standard 7th chapter 8 static electricity we have studied that when certain objects are rubbed against each other the negatively charged electrons on one object go to another object or is transferred on another object. The object on which they go becomes negatively charged due to an excess of negatively charged particles. Similarly, electricity can be made to flow where a force will have to be applied to put a stationary object into motion. We get current electricity when the electrons in an electrical conductor are made to flow. Electrical conductor is an object or type of material that allows the flow of electrons or charge in one or more direction. Example copper wire. Current electricity. In static electricity chapter we have studied that when air and clouds rub against each other in the sky the upper part of some clouds on the upper side becomes positively charged and the lower sides becomes negatively charged. When this negative charge on the bottom of the cloud becomes much larger than the charge on the ground, it starts flowing towards the ground in stages. This happens very fast in much less than a second and heat, light and sound energy are produced along with the electric current. Its sensation is felt by us due to a microscopically small current flowing to the brain. You are aware of the current flowing through wires, electric bulbs and equipments in the house. In the electric cells of a radio or in a car battery, a current is produced by the flow of both negatively and positively charged particles. Electrostatic potential and potential difference. We have studied that water or liquid flows from a higher level to a lower level. Heat always flows from a body of high temperature to a body of low temperature. Similarly, positive charges flow from a point of higher electric level to a point of lower electric level. This electric level deciding the direction of flow of electric charges is called electrostatic potential. Potential difference. Potential difference is the difference in the amount of energy that charge carriers have between two points in a circuit. It is similar to the temperature difference of hot and cold bodies or difference between the starting point of a water, waterfall and its bottom. Let us study about potential difference by doing an activity involving an electric circuit. Electrical circuit is a path in which electrons flow. Take connecting copper wires and connect the circuit as shown in figure 4.1a. No current is seen to flow in the bulb. Now connect 
in the same circuit a 1.5 volt dry cell available in the market as shown in the figure 4.1b electric current flows from the negative terminal of the cell to the positive terminal of the cell negative terminal means electrons are present on this terminal and they flow from negative terminal to the positive terminal positive terminal is a terminal towards which electrons flow in figure 4.1a you can see the negative terminal and positive terminal indicated by plus and minus sign minus sign is for negative terminal and positive sign is for positive terminal it will be realized from glowing of the bulb that a current is flowing in the circuit in figure 4.1 a there is no current as there is no potential difference in the absence of any cell current starts flowing in the circuit as soon as the potential difference is applied conventional current assumes that current flows out of the positive terminal through the circuit and into the negative terminal this was the convention chosen during the discovery of electricity both conventional current and electric current are used in fact it makes no difference which way current is flowing as long as it is used consistently we have seen that electric current is produced due to the flow of charged particles electrical charge flowing through a wire in one second can be called unit current the si unit of electric current is coulomb per second or ampere electric cell it is a device that is capable of changing some form of energy such as chemical nuclear into electricity various types of electric cells are available today these are used in a range of machines from wrist watches to submarines out of this you must be aware of solar cells the main function of various electric cells is to maintain a constant potential difference between its two terminals the electric cells work on the electric charges to maintain a constant potential difference dry cell it is a type of electric battery commonly used for portable electrical devices this battery stores chemical energy which can be converted into electrical energy you will find dry cell in wall clocks and remote control of tv let us study the construction of dry cell take a lead dry cell and remove its outer coating inside you will find a whitish metal layer this is the zinc metal layer this is the negative terminal of the cell now carefully break open this layer there is another layer inside an electrolyte is filled between these two layers an electrolyte is a substance that produce ions in solution when dissolved in water it has the ability to conduct electricity in solution the electrolyte contains negatively charged and positively charged ions these are the carriers of electricity ions are electrically charged atoms that have lost or gained electrons because of the number of electrons does not equal the number of protons in an atom the electrolyte is a wet pulp of zinc chloride and ammonium chloride there is a graphite rod at the center of the cell this is a positive terminal of the cell a paste of manganese dioxide is filled outside the rod because of the chemical reactions of all these chemicals electrical charge is produced on the two terminals that is graphite rod and zinc layer and an electric current flows in the circuit 
due to the wet pulp used in the cell the chemical reaction proceeds very slowly hence a large electric current cannot be obtained from dry cell compared to the electric cells using liquids the shelf life of dry cells is longer dry cells are very convenient to use as this can be held in any direction with respect to the ground and can be used in mobile instruments lead acid cell it was first invented in 1859 by french physicist gaston plantain it is a type of rechargeable battery this type of cell can be recharged after getting electrically discharged the lead acid cell contains a lead electrode and a lead oxide electrode and both are dipped in dilute sulfuric acid electrodes are electrical conductors and they are made up of metals dilute sulfuric acid acts as an electrolyte lead oxide carries a positive charge while the lead electrode carries a negative charge the potential difference between the two is nearly 2 volts because of the chemical reaction between the substance in the cell electrical charge is produced on both the electrodes and electric current flows through the bulb in the circuit lead acid cells are used in cars trucks motorcycles and ups nickel cadmium cell nickel cadmium cell is a type of rechargeable battery using nickel oxide hydroxide and metallic cadmium as electrodes nickel cadmium cells can be carried to different places easily the cells deliver 1.2 volts potential difference and are rechargeable electric circuit a dry cell is fitted in a cell holder which is connected to an electric bulb a plug key or switch by connecting wires a cell holder is one or more compartments for holding a battery for dry cells the holder must make electrical contact with the battery terminals when the plug key or switch is closed the bulb lights up this means that a current flows through the circuit and bulb lights up when we remove the cell the electric current flowing through the circuit stops and the bulb stops glowing this type of connection of electrical components is called an electrical circuit connecting cells in electric circuit we studied that only one cell is connected to the wire but in gadgets like transistor radio two or three dry cells are seen to be connected in series this is done to obtain more potential difference than that of a single cell in this series connection the positive terminal of one cell is connected to the negative terminal of second cell and the positive terminal of the second cell is connected to the negative terminal of the third one therefore if each cell has a potential difference of 1 volt the total potential difference of three cells will be 3 volts magnetic effects of electric current magnetic effects of electric current means that when a current is flowing in a wire it produces a magnetic field around it let us study this by doing an activity take the inside tray of an used up matchbox place a small magnetic needle inside the tray now take a long connecting wire and wind it around the tray complete the circuit by connecting in it this wire electric cell plug key and a bulb mark the position of the magnetic needle when the key or switch was closed the electric current started flowing through the wire which was wound on the tray the bulb started to glow also when the current started flowing the needle 
changed its position. This showed that magnetic field was created when electric current started flowing in the wire. This is magnetic effect of electric current. It was first observed by Hans Christian Oersted. Electromagnet In standard 6, you have studied in brief about electromagnets and its uses. Let us see how electromagnets are constructed. Take a meter long flexible copper wire having resistive coating and wind tightly on a long iron screw. Connect the two ends of the wire in a socket. Also connect an electric cell and a plug key in the circuit. Keep some paper clips near the screw. Now start the current in the circuit by plugging the key. When the electric current flows through the wire, magnetism is produced around the wire and because of that the screw also attains magnetism. You will see that paper clips are getting attracted to the screw. As soon as the current stops, the magnetism vanishes. Electromagnets are used to produce strong magnetic field useful in scientific research. Electric bell. It is the one which we use in our home. On the screen, you will see a picture of electric bell with its outer cover removed. You can see a copper wire or coil wound around an iron piece. This wire acts as an electromagnet. An iron strip and hammer are fitted near the electromagnet. To complete the circuit, a contact screw is in touch with the iron strip. After the connections are complete, the current starts flowing through the wire. The wire becomes an electromagnet. The electromagnet then pulls the hammer towards itself. In this, the hammer which is at the end strikes the bell to produce a sound. However, as soon as the hammer strikes the bell, it loses contact with the contact screw. The circuit breaks and the current stops flowing. The wire is no longer an electromagnet. The hammer then comes back to its original position and the iron strip then touches the contact screw. The electric current is then immediately restored and again the hammer hits the bell by the above process. This action repeats itself and the bell rings. I hope you have understood this lesson. Thank you.